Lieutenant Catani, as an eyewitness to this uh, situation, give us some of the facts that you saw as the balloon uh, touched down the first time here at about 13th Street and 9th Avenue. Okay, we didn't actually see the touchdown. We were in a station at approximately 7.15. We heard an explosion. We went outside to investigate, and when we did, we saw a hot air balloon with two of its tethers broken, the gondola hanging down, and people hanging onto the gondola. The gondola was traveling in a southeasterly direction. Uh, we went back inside, called dispatch, notified them of what we had. Uh, at the same time, we had smoke showing down here on 9th Avenue. We came down here to investigate. We found wires down and uh, two, set, two spot fires. We extinguished the spot fires and we called for backups. Uh, in other words, the basket was never tangled at this point. It just brushed against the wires and kept on going? That's correct. Evidently, the basket came in contact with the, the ground wire. Uh, we've got high transmission lines that run down 9th Avenue. That ground line wire in turn snapped from evidently from the weight of the gondola, uh, came in contact with the high, tran high uh, power transmission lines, and, there w and the ensuing flash apparently is what burned the people in the gondola and, uh, and did the damage to the gondola, I would imagine. When, when you arrived, uh, were the lines, the power lines in the street, and if so, how bad was the traffic in the, in the vicinity? Traffic was usual morning rush hour traffic. The lines were not in, in the street. That wasn't a problem. Um, were you concerned at all about these houses? Was there any possibility of a fire from the, from the lines? We were concerned. We had one spot fire here. As we were putting this one out, we looked down the street and we saw smoke that appeared to be coming from the eaves of another house. However, when we got down the street, we found out that uh, all we really had was a brush fire in the backyard. The smoke was going up into the eaves on the north side of the house and out on the south side. Was that as a result of a line down at that vicinity? That's questionable. It's hard to say because it's, it's, that fire was so far north from where the actual wires were down. Uh, I believe that was a 1400 number and we're at 1320. So it was several houses north from where the, the actual wires are down. <clears throat> as far as the victims go, I really don't have a lot of information on uh, Rescue 3 uh, did a pursuit from Station 3 on the uh, gondola as it dropped. Um, I believe it was in the vicinity of 7th Avenue and 2nd Street. Uh, they had four people in the gondola that had severe burns and were taken to BGH, I believe. Did you happen to notice or did the chase car happen to stop by this point and ask for uh, any information? Not to my knowledge. I wasn't aware there was a chase car. My name is uh, Richard Cooper. Uh, you my address? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, Fort Lauderdale, 610 Northwest 19th Street. And your phone number? 467-1053. Uh, okay. Uh, were you on your way to work? I was on the way to the airport to take some friends to catch a plane. And Go ahead and describe what you saw and uh, how it progressed. Okay, when we came out of the apartment, my apartment, we seen the balloon and okay. it was... At that time, where was it? Was it on the wires? No, no. It was just coming, going south, you know, same direction we were. And when he was on 19th Street, just on 9th Avenue, he started losing altitude. And he just like coasted into the uh, power lines. He was trying like to look like to reignite the burner. Like the burner went out and he was trying to reignite the burner. And it hit the power lines and there was two huge explosions. This was at 13th Street and 9th Avenue. Right. And when, when the explosions occurred, the gondola broke loose, and there was only like two ropes, cables, whatever, holding it together. The guy in the red jacket was hanging out of it with his back to the gondola, you know, in a position like that, unconscious. Uh, apparently, all four people were unconscious at that time. Within two blocks, it seemed as the man regained consciousness and was trying to crawl back up into the gondola. Uh, someone else in the gondola reached down and was trying to help pull him back up in it. He finally got back up in. Uh, then it started losing altitude again. 
right around Sunrise Boulevard, and it appeared that they were trying to throw ballast out of the gondola, you know. And then it started coming down rapid at that point and hit here, and there was another huge explosion, one more explosion at that point. Then everyone fell as we turned this corner, you know, coming this way just to try to do whatever we could do. They all fell into the street. You actually saw them uh, falling from the Fall basket? Fall from about right there. Did it look like they, they toppled out of the basket or did they jump out of the basket? It's hard to say I was, you know, a block away at the time. They, everybody just came out and they just hit here and we came and the guy with, was in the red, it, he said he could not feel his legs, you know, so we just tried to comfort him, keep him down. The lady was sitting by the stop sign, you know, we told her she was in shock and she was burnt really bad, all of them were burnt bad. We told her to stay still, we put the other guy against the fence, and there was a guy in a white shirt, we couldn't keep him down at all, Harley. he just wanted to check everything out. And then a balloon went down the street, about three blocks or so, and hit the ground. Okay, when, when the balloon hit here, did you notice any visible flames? No. Sparks? Just smoke. Smoke, a lot of smoke, yeah. Uh, state your name for us and where you work, and tell us what your uh, involvement was with this situation. Uh, my name is Tim Pappas. I work for Hoover Canvas Products, and uh, I was one of the first people on the scene. I saw it. all my lights dimmed in the shop. I saw the hot air balloon, heard the explosion. I ran up here, tried to help the people as best I could. There were four people laying on the ground, one laying face down, and it looked like to me two other people were like going into shock or something. And, uh, we just waited for the. Uh, ambulance to get here and then you know police took over we just left after that but uh you said there were four people on the ground the one laying down face down was there any sign of life yeah he was still alive he was burnt pretty bad though he was talking and moving a little bit and everything but uh, he was probably the worst one his face was pretty badly burnt his arms his hands skin was burnt off his arms and stuff like that the lady she was in shock there was a woman there she was looked like she was in shock she was burnt pretty bad too all the hair was burned all that stuff off her head and it was one other guy, his hair was pretty badly burnt off. <clears throat> he was just sitting there, <clears throat> he was just leaning up against the fence, like in a state of shock. Yeah, uh, you said your lights dimmed, did they, they never went out completely though, they no, came they right back out. on? They dimmed, then it came back on again, then the explosion, and then they went out. And that's when I saw the balloon and I ran up here to see if I could help anybody. Did you actually see the balloon or anything? Yeah, I saw the balloon, the basket hanging by one side and it floated down towards Sistrunk Boulevard, and that's the last I saw of the balloon. I don't know what happened to, to the balloon. Okay. We returned from a dumpster fire when uh, we noticed a hot air balloon drifting and uh, dangling uh, with one tether loose and uh, uh, no occupants inside drifting toward uh, the southeast. Um, we reported it and responded to the scene and found the hot air balloon here at the corner of Northwest 7 Terrace and 4th Street uh, draped across the house in the uh, service line. Uh, the basket didn't contain any occupants. Uh, they were, um, they had jumped out of the basket in the area of uh, 9th Street and 7th Terrace um, prior to uh, the, imp the balloon's impact. When you arrived, was there any fire in the basket? Uh, there was no fire at the time. We just had three uh, propane tanks. The fire had already burned itself out and um, there was no uh, sign of uh, any further uh, hazard other than the energized electrical wires and the uh, three large propane cylinders inside. Did you actually notice whether the wires were energized, were there any sparks, or was the fuse already blown on the pole? Uh, noticed that the meter was still turning on the building and uh, that it was draped across the service. 
FPNL responded uh, almost immediately and uh, secured the power from both ends. And uh, we disengaged the uh, uh, balloon basket and uh, set it on the ground, wait for National Transportation Safety Board to arrive. Where was the basket originally from, from its position now? Uh, originally, it was draped across the service line in the uh, top corner of the house, halfway leaning against the building and uh, halfway on top of the second car to the rear. Was it necessary to cut any additional lines on the balloon? Uh, after the power was uh, de-energized, we had to release the uh, tether lines to the balloon and uh, another holding line, nylon line, to the balloon. Then we lowered it with the assistance of ladder one. Is this the spot where the chase car arrived? Uh, that's affirmative. The chase vehicle arrived uh, shortly thereafter with uh, one female occupant, the owner of the balloon. And did, where did she proceed after that? Uh, once we found that um, the initial incident occurred at uh, Power Line and 9th Street, we found that um, the victims had jumped out at, at uh, um, it was Power Line and 13th Street. Yeah, after hitting a 240,000 volt line and shearing the basket, uh, the basket caught on fire. The victims jumped out of the balloon at approximately 9th Street and 7th Terrace, and then the balloon proceeded toward this area to drift toward this area. So did the chase car then go to the, uh, to the scene where the victims were? Um, after uh, it initially came to this scene, we advised them that there were some serious injuries, uh, possible fatality at that location, and the PD uh, escorted them back to that scene. Uh, so the National Transportation Safety Board is on its way. When do you expect them? Uh, we have no ETA at this time. Uh, FP, FPNL and uh, PD have been at the scene uh, for some time. We're securing the uh, power until their investigation is complete. And uh, once they uh, complete their investigation, uh, we'll be able to get everything back to normal here. Thank you, Lieutenant Di Petrillo.